What's going on everybody, it's Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to show you how to set up this device, which is the Pico 4 for development. We're gonna be looking at how to download the Pico integration, also how we can set up the preview tool, which is going to allow us to run the Pico 4 by using the Unity Editor during play mode. This is really similar to how the Oculus integration does it with the Oculus Link. So really excited to show you that. And lastly, I'm going to show you how we can install XRI 2.3, which is gonna give you really cool new features that we can combine with the Pico 4. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right, guys, so we got a lot to cover today in showing you how to set up the Pico 4 with the XRI 2.3, which is currently on pre-release. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a brand new project. We'll go through the process. We'll deploy it to a device. We'll also run the demos by using the preview tool that the Pico team put together. So this is gonna be a very chill video going through some of those features. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a brand new project. I'm gonna be using 2021.3.af1. That's the version that I've been using to test. So let's go ahead and do that. And then this project, it's going to be available in GitHub. So you're going to be able to download it and test it on your own device. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna call this Pico, just do Pico for Unity getting started. And then I'll just put it in that folder and then it's just going to be a 3D core project. Click on create project. So the next thing that I'm gonna do while that is getting created, we're gonna go ahead and go into the Pico developer portal. This link I'm gonna be also putting in the description. So they have a lot of different things in here. If you want to use Unity, if you want to use Unreal, if you want to develop for native, you can download all the necessary packages to do that. We're gonna be using the Pico Unity integration SDK, which is very similar to the Oculus integration. Actually, it's very, very similar. So I think the setup, it's, it's really cool to know that they are both very, you know, very similar. So what you need to do is you're gonna be downloading this. It's gonna go ahead and download it. You're gonna go through this huge disclaimer and I'm not gonna read it, but you wanna make sure that you read it just to make sure that you are protected. And then what I'll do here, I'll go into showing folder and then we'll just put everything in here into downloads and then we'll keep an eye on that. And then I'm also going to be downloading the preview tool, which is basically the Oculus Link version. There's going to be a PC component that runs on our machine. And then there's also going to be a preview tool running on the device itself that allows it to connect with each other. So I'm just gonna download this one as well. Again, just make sure that you read the agreement here. Just gonna agree and sell my life to Pico. I, I think I trust them, so we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract these from downloads. So I just go ahead and do extract files. And I do this so that it creates a folder. Just hit okay. And then we'll put it in that folder. And then once you do that, it's gonna, you know, the SDK is gonna be in here. So what I normally do for the SDK is I put them under code and then I have an SDKs folder. I'll just move it there. That way we know if I need to use it for multiple projects. I can use it for multiple projects. And then the next thing that I want to do as well, if you look at the Pico preview tool, let me also extract the files, create a folder, hit okay. And I'll put it just for convenience, we'll put it on the same directory that I have the other one. So let me go ahead and go back to that code and then SDK. And then I'll just put it in here, even though it's not an SDK, it'll just make it easier for us to follow. Once you do that, I think that's everything that we'll need in here. You can download the metrics tool and also they have an OpenXR plugin, which you can also use. The next thing that I'm gonna do though, if you go into this Pico tool release, we're also going to be extracting this other folder, which contains the actual PC component that we're gonna need. So just go ahead and extract files and then hit okay. And then this is gonna be the APK that we need to install onto the device, which I'll show you in just a minute. And then if you go into the release, you're gonna see that we have this preview tool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it here to the taskbar. And then we'll just have it running. Again, this is like similar to the Oculus Link feature where it opens an Oculus application. So just have that running at all times. This will be the first thing that you need to have running before we actually run from Unity. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Windows and then Package Manager. And right now this doesn't have anything, right? I haven't installed any packages. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually go here to uh, Packages from the disk. And then if we go up to the code folder, SDKs, 
There's gonna be the Pico Unity integration, which is what we just downloaded. And then just go ahead and double click on the package. Okay, so once you finish basically getting things up and running, you're gonna get a pop-up here with some recommendations that they, you know, they want you to have. And one thing that is really important though is when you use the a version of Unity, make sure that it has the Android and NDK components once you go through the installation. If you don't, you're not, it's not gonna work because you need, this is actually Pico 4 and the OS is all built on top of Android. So we're gonna be using the Android component to deploy to it. So just make sure that you have that. You're also going to get this right here. And one thing that I recommend that you do, if you go into their developer platform, which is what I did, I and you can go to this link to create basically a new application. I call it Pico 4, getting it started. So if you go to it, you're gonna be able to download, a, not to download, but to create an app. So in my case, I created an app and this is the app ID. It doesn't really have anything. If you're planning to release something, you know, obviously you want to add more to it, but if you click on it and you go under APIs, there's gonna be an app ID here that it's going to, you know, obviously this is all private information. I'm not gonna use it, so you're more than welcome to use the same ID. I'll probably be deleting it, so I recommend that you create your own. So I'll just copy that value, and then if we go back in here, then and paste that value, you should be okay. And I'm also going to set apply because it's gonna be changing a couple of different configurations in here. And then I'll hit apply, it'll make some project changes based on the recommendations. Now you can see that everything is applied and we should be good to go there. So what I'll do here is we'll go into assets and then go into show an explorer and you can go into packages and double click on the manifest. That JSON, this is not the best way to install it, but for now, because I'm using a pre-release version of the interaction toolkit, you want to use it, you know, you want to do it in the same way. So just go ahead and copy and paste this. You can also download it from GitHub, which I'll link in the description. And then I'll minimize that because I might need to get back into it uh, once, you know, if I need to make other changes. All right, so it looks like everything got installed. The last thing that I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go back into the package manager and I'm going to go into the XR Interaction Toolkit and let's go ahead and also import the started assets and also the XR Device Simulator just in case we want to also test with the new simulator. Once you do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clone one of the demo scenes that they provide, that way we can customize it and change it for the Pico 4. So if you go here to Started Assets, you're gonna see that there's a demo scene. I'm gonna go ahead and clone it, and I think this is the one, so I'll just put it into Scenes in here, and then we can just rename it to say Getting Started, and then we can just get rid of this one. The other thing that I'm gonna do though is I want this to work with the new controllers, and in order for you to make that work with the Pico integration, if you go here into Pico integration, and I believe it's on the runtime, and if I go into actually platform, samples, last one is gonna be on the resources, prefabs, there we go. And then I'll just make this smaller. So basically there's gonna be one for the left controller and also one for the right controller. I thought we have the actual Pico controllers, there we go, it's on there under controller. So if you double click on this, you're gonna see that this is going to be the Pico 4 controller and there's also one for the right hand side. And we want this to be animated, right? Like I want when I am pressing the buttons, when I'm moving on the little joystick here, you want to make sure that those move okay. And if you click on this component, you're gonna see that there's gonna be an animator and also an animator controller. So this is pretty standard to what the Oculus integration has. So how can we make those work? Well, first I'm gonna disable these two, XR controller and then XR controller. And what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna create a new prefab out of these. That way we can, that way we don't lose those changes. So I'm just gonna do create folder and then prefabs. And I'll just do this and then I'll drag it and drop it in here. And you're trying to save a prefab with a missing script, which is not allowed. Let's find out which one is the missing script that this needs. And I believe this is in the main camera. It looks like it is in the main camera. Okay, so that's okay. We'll go ahead and do it now. And then it's gonna say, would you like to get a new original prefab? Let's go ahead and create a new original prefab. And then that way we have that one now linked to that. Okay, so cool. So what I'll do here is I'll go inside and then we're gonna be just changing this prefab just a little bit. We have the controllers disabled. We could delete them if we want to. I'm just gonna leave them disabled for now. And if we go down to our Pico integration, which I close, 
And you can see that we have the Pico 4L, so which is gonna be the one for the left. And let me do that one more time. And then, okay, open prefab. Okay, so it looks like there's a prefab of a prefab, that's fine. We'll do that on this, on this one, and then open it and put it right there. And it's going to be not perfectly aligned like the other one. And the reason for that is because the left one here, it's it has basically an offset. So I'll just go ahead and move the offset. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and disable this controller. And then I'll do the same thing on the right one here. Let's put it right here. And then the offset, the other one is rotated. We don't need to rotate this one because this one was already created the, the right way. So now we should see that we have the, you know, both of the different controllers in here. In fact, the, the lines here looks like I modified a different component. Let me go ahead and fix that one more time on the cylinder. And then I'm gonna go here and then drag it and drop it, drag it and drop it. Just trust me that this is gonna work. And if not, we'll figure it out together, right? Okay, so now if we look at this component here, we have our Pico. Four, right? And we have the controllers, which are the right controllers. Now, if I go into the left hand though, we need to also associate it to the right XR controller. I don't want to associate it to the one that is hitting. I want to actually associate it to, to this one, but the actual child component, which has an animator. So I'm going to go ahead and go back down here and then associate it to that. And then I'm going to say, yeah, animate the model. We don't need to say any of these components. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. And at least that's what I did and that's how I got it to work. So if you find different issues with this, just let me know and then I'll be able to help you. So now what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and apply all those changes to my prefab and we should be okay as far as the controllers. So now let's go ahead and go back in here to file and then build settings. And I want to add this scene, which is the getting started scene to the build settings. I'm also going to make this a development build just to make sure that if we, you know, if we get an error, we get additional details and then let's go into player settings so this one we're just gonna say learn xr lc and you know you can pick your company we're gonna say pico for I guess pico for demo version i like to start at zero at 1.00 i think that's always a good thing and then i believe the api minimum level needs to be at least API level 26, otherwise you're gonna get an error if you don't do that. And then it looks like we're getting invalid characters have been removed from the application identifier. Okay, so it basically does it for you. Whatever it needs to do, it makes it work. And then what I'll do here on the Android version of the plugin management, well, the plugin provider for Pico, we need to enable Pico. And then I'm also going to do the same thing for the standalone because I'm gonna be running that with the preview tool here. All right guys, so we need to enable developer settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into settings here and then go into general. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see that we have about and then also a lot of information here about the device. There's also software version. I'm gonna press that seven times. So I'm gonna keep selecting. As soon as you do that, you're gonna see that now we have a developer option selected. I'm going to be enabling some of these features. So I want to do the USB debugging. That way we can deploy to the device. You can hear that. And then I should have an APK in here. So let's do ADB. And if you don't have ADB, make sure that you install it. And then just do devices just to make sure we can see our new Pico device, which is showing up in here. So that's great. Now what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and install the preview tool. So let me make sure that I can do Pico, and then make sure you select the APK. So ADB install, and then the APK. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna see performing a stream install. And as soon as it's done, we should be able to see it. But if we wanna open the preview tool, make sure you go, I think you can go into apps, and then preview tool. And then now you're gonna see that it shows. So you can either do wireless connection. I recommend that you use wire connection because I'm using the USB-C and you're gonna need that cable as well for debugging purposes. It's gonna make the, the experience a lot faster. And then I just do wire connection. Once you do that, this should start opening up and then you're gonna be able to see that now we have, there's gonna be, this icon is gonna change to connect it, which it does now. So we should be ready to go in Unity. Let me go ahead and go back in here and make sure that we can run in Unity. So right now I don't have much things in here. All, all it is is just the simple demo, but we, we gotta do one more thing before we run this experience. And what I'm gonna do here on the XR origin, which I think is where I did it before, 
is we need to add another component. Actually, I think it's going to be, let me collapse this. And yeah, I think it's gonna be on the XR origin and then collapse everything in here. And we're gonna be adding another component that it's going to be needed for the life cycle of the Pico. So you're gonna need this PXR underscore manager. And I think this just adds additional requirements that you're gonna need for in order for you to run under Pico 4. To be honest, I don't know much about it. I just started using it. I don't want to, but it looks like you can change, you know, the the foveation level. Looks like there's multiple options in here. I'm gonna leave it as default just because I just wanna show you how this is gonna run. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do though, if I go here in the, into the XR origin, I'm gonna change this to be floor. We have here grabbable objects that I can grab now with the with the controller. You guys can see that, that that's working. And in fact, if I were to show the, the controller here, you can see that I can move the controller and it is moving and changing in real time. I can press some of these buttons. Everything it's, you know, the controller is mapped correctly. We can also grab some of these items. I can bring it closer to me and I can throw them in the floor. You know, everything is working. I can rotate them by moving you know, the joystick here on the controller. And then if we go around, I can also teleport, if I wanted to teleport, let's teleport to that area. Gaze doesn't really work with this device because this device doesn't have eye tracking, but I know one of the pro versions of this device will, and also some of the older versions that are pro support the, the gaze interaction. So it looks like we have here our UI, I can change the slider. Just make sure that you uncheck this user entitlement check. The reason for that is because if you don't, when we run this application on the device, it's going to say that it's not copyrighted or basically it's not a trusted app. So during development, just make sure that you uncheck that and then when you re release it to the store, then you can check it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uncheck that and we can now restart the bill. And it's gonna say here, entitlement check is highly recommended, which will protect your basically your application from copyright. So we can just say ignore, don't remind me again, but it's gonna allow us to run during development of this application. All right guys, so it looks at this finished building. Let's go ahead and check it out and see if everything is working. So this application is running on the device. So we know that the deployment was successful. I can, you know, I can obviously move around. I can, you know, do what I was able to do before. And things are running just fine. So I can grab those items. The controllers are, you know, mapped correctly. I can move around, the rays are working. All right guys, so that's everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys wanna see more videos by using the Pico 4 for XR development purposes, let me know in the comments and let me know if you like videos like this because I'm really excited to bring you a lot more content with VR development. Thank you very much, guys.